Hi guys and welcome back to the Gutenberg block development series. Okay, in today's video we are going to see what's going on into our code structure and what is really going on under the hood of this really ugly Gutenberg block that we create in the last episode. Okay, so let's dive in and see what's going on. So if I open the VS code and see you can see pretty much we have a package JSON file which is all of the packages that we are need for uh, developing a custom Gutenberg block which aren't uh, which isn't a lot of packages you can see we just have WordPress scripts that's it for now but we can add any package that we want into this so in in the future videos we are going to do that in here we have a name version description a pretty usual package.json file and we are also have a package lock.json that uh, you already know about it we have a readme file which is not a big deal so let's dive in into the big part of the structure so let's zoom in so as you can see guys we have a build a folder which is our final code which are going to be used into the website so never mind we just uh, have to keep it in mind that uh, under the hood all of the codes are coming from this build anything we do in here it's just for us okay into this uh, src file src folder any code that we are doing here it's just for development purposes and after we are we are done with our development we just need to uh, do some command and the all of this code will transform into this build folder and the final code which are not really readable for us and uh, actually we don't need to wor be worried about this because wordpress script that we are just see on our package json file are going to take care of all of this okay so let's see what's going on if i'm gonna open this test block dot php file which is the main file of our plugin uh, you can see this is a just really a simple header of a plugin after that we are just seeing a create block uh, action which is going to just uh, register our block type and you can see this is from build not from source folder all right and this is just registering the block that's it all of the other parts are coming from the source file and let's dive in and see what's going on under the hood so we have a block.json file which is kind of the heart of this block this is the configuration that we are need to add into this block.json file all right we are going to work with this block.json file a lot all right so as you can see we have a, a schema which uh, point to a, an a schema never mind let's move on the next uh, part is api version that we are using api version 2 the name of our block which is create block and test block we can change this and i will show you in the future videos the title of the block the which category this block belongs to and the icon description supports text domain all of this detail we are going to uh, explore all of these uh, options and details in future videos all right in this video we are going to just take a, a look at all of this and absorb it all right after that 
after this plug.json we have a, an edit file.json which is pretty much anything that we want to add into the edit part edit section you see uh, in the Gutenberg block we have two parts one of them is for the back end or for the editor and one of them is the, for the front end and uh, which we are calling this one save.json which is going to be this one save.json and one of them is edit.js uh, I'm sorry js okay oh man all right so let's back here okay then uh, let's test it all right so let's see go back here I just can remove all of this let's clean up our code a little bit in order to see everything here pretty much the same okay you can ignore all of this this is for internet internationalization or uh, translatable this text I'm just gonna delete this and put here navid dev for example oh i'm sorry i should remove this as well because we don't need it okay if i hit the save button and go back here if i refresh this uh, we should remove this one first and then we should add another one uh, i'm sorry which one we changed Navidev, okay. So, why it's still here? Hello from editor. Let's close up this and clean up a little bit our space here. All right, we have editor, block, style, save. So, this should work. Let's get back here sometimes we should just remove oh we should uh, refresh the page yeah I forgot to mention that oh silly me I should run npm run start how I forgot that npm run start okay after running this we should good to go because i just told you anything we do here after we saving this should be built and move on to the build folder all right so let's refresh the page and start one more time yeah now it's working okay so if i change anything in here this will change from the editor but let's check here and let's update this one first and refresh the page as you can see here the text is totally different why because we should change it from save.js file so let's clean up the code here and here i'm going to say editor and after this i'm going to copy this and paste it right over here from save this should be save method all right so let's get back if i refresh here remember guys if i refresh here i will not see any changes i should go back to the editor here i should remove this one and maybe update and after that another add now update again and now if i go back here i should be able to see the changes let's try it one more time yeah if i refresh the page now it gutenberg will find out that this block it's changed okay so if i click onto block recovery this should be work right now if I save the uh, if I hit the update button now 
it's working again it, it's a little bit weird because every time we should refresh the page and it's not really convenient to do that but that's the way it is for now and we should just keep it in mind if you don't if you didn't see any results here you should just refresh the page maybe remove the block one time and and add it again and refresh the page and see the results again all right so to sum up we uh, have two important method one of them is edit.js which is about the edit part of the block and one of them is for saving how we want to save that block into the database all right and also we have uh, an editor.sas file which if you read the, the the comments you can see editor.sas file is just a styles for the editor part for example if you can see the blue color here if i go back to a style.css this style.sas file this is for front end and back end both all right but editor is just for editor so why if I go back and copy this color and go back here, maybe add another color, for example, a yellow color, which should be really easy to check. If I refresh the page, you can see this is changed. And if I go back here, this is not. Why? Because I just change the style into the editor not into the save or front end part all right so this is the whole structure in the next video we are going to use a boilerplate in order to create our own custom block all right so i will see you on the next video